Uh, welcome to another tutorial uh, brought to you by Heretic Studios and Toko myself. In this tutorial we'll be taking a look at... Well, last tutorial I explained basically all the selection methods that were tools in themselves like the lasso, etc. Um, this time around we'll all be explaining another selection method that is sort of hidden uh, not a lot of people use it when it's uh, even though it's there, but the method is using the extract tool. Now this picture in itself would probably easily be cut out using the magic selection, uh, the quick selection tool, or the magic wand. But instead of that, we're going to be using the extraction tool. Now, the main purpose for the extract tool in itself is to extract images from backgrounds, and usually these images would have like hair or other fibers that were wouldn't be picked up with the use of the quick selection tool, the wand tool, and sometimes even pen tool, lasso tool. You can't get all those hairs that could be attained with the extract tool. So the extraction tool is located in the filters menu, drop down and extract or uh, option command X or alt command X on a PC. So here it is, it's brought up. As you can see it looks just like a couple you know other filter tools. You have your options over here which I will be keeping the same. And to the left, just as with the warp tool, the liquify tool or etc, you have your tools the marker tool, which you use to mark the edges, and the description should tell you. F fill is what you fill the outline with. Erase, you erase your marks, and etc. So what I'm going to do is, got the marker tool selected, I'm going to zoom in with the hotkey uh, command space or control space. That's a really good hotkey. And what I'm going to do is, I can bump this in size a little bit with the bracket keys, is follow the edge. Now, I don't have to do this to follow the edge. If I did that, I wouldn't get a very good extraction at all. It would be faded. And the only way, truly, just following it like that to get a good extraction would be to go all the way down to about 5 and just follow the edge like that. And there's an easier way. And if you mess around, you can find it real easy. If you hold the command key or the control key, you see this crosshair up here. Now what this does is it uses the same technology as the quick selection tool in finding edges. Or basically it uses the Photoshop edge engine. Now what you do is when you're holding control and you press down, you can see the crosshair is hunting for these edges. And as you move along the edge, it finds it perfectly and outlines it. So basically the first part is just outlining the edge and this image you can just hold control and just keep going. Don't just hold down and do one big selection, that's another little tip. Because if you do that and you make a mistake and you hit undo and that was the whole line, the whole thing would disappear and I have to redo it all over again. So lift up or let up a lot. Uh, I'd say every couple inches on this, you know, from your eye on the screen, because you really don't want to redo selections a lot. Make sure you make the brush a little smaller. And at this stage, it's really nice to have a tablet because you can just kind of trace along the edges. It's even nicer to have a visual tablet like a Cintiq or another tablet. I'm not really sure if there's any other graphics tablets out there besides the ones you make yourself, but both. All tablets that I've used, and both of those graphic tablets, well, that one graphic tablet, both the tablets, um, come from Wacom or Wacom, I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. It's a Japanese company, I believe, so it's probably Wacom. Uh, but they make Premier tablets that are used basically in all design fields. You can see these. In all art colleges, you're going to see these. And odds are, you probably own one yourself. It's not a Wacom, another type of, or another brand of tablet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep outlining the edges here. And 
I'm actually just going to pause the video. You get the drift. <laughs> and I'll be back when I got the whole thing selected. So uh, right, see you in a minute. See, I've cut it out. The next step, or trace it out, the next step is to select the paint bucket and just click the inside of the image. And as you can see, it's turned blue. That means it's masked correctly. And what you want to do now is hit preview. And then just, as you can see, it did make a good cut on this image. The main reason I picked this image is because I knew it would probably do a good cut due to the fact oops, that the edges were, you know, pretty, con they contrasted a lot with the background and would give me a good clean cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit OK and it just cuts out the background. Uh, now you can basically use this in any design project or anything else and you know it doesn't pertain to just simple uh, contrasting images. You can use the extraction technique to extract more or less anything out of an image. Uh, there is some limitations to it. It just depends on image quality, etc. Um, at the end of this video, I'll show you some other images that I've used the extraction tools just to cut out, just to give you an example of the possibilities of the tool. Well, uh, that's basically all I can explain on the extraction tool. I know it's pretty straightforward, the interface anyway, but the fact that most people don't even know it's there, or they've seen the name, but they don't pay attention, or they don't give it a try. I really, really recommend the extraction tool for basically any time you need to cut anything out that has a fiber or hair or the other selection tools aren't working for you. The extraction tool is a quick and easy way to fix your problems. Now, there is one thing I didn't mention about the extraction tool here. I'll go back into it. Say this area had tons of tiny fibers and holding down control wasn't doing it. Basically it would just not select anything and you wouldn't get a good selection. Well there's really no need to worry. All you have to do is get a smaller brush, just make sure the hairs or fibers are being selected and just kind of go over the edge on your own. Or if there was a lot of fuzz here just kind of go over the edge and just make sure it's selected. And basically you can get any cut you want. So that's been it for uh, for this tutorial. I'll be back with, for, with more. I got this new machine set up. Uh, Leopard 10.5.2 just came out earlier today. And I've got opaqueness back on my menu bar, which makes me happy. And next thing all I need to do is release something that will be a system fix for the rounded corners, because I love those. Um, as said, though, that's it for now. I'll show you some clips. Er, yeah, clips at the end, or pictures, rather, of just other examples of the tool. And I'll, till next time, this has been Tolko from Hero 6 Studios. Have a good night.